and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and this is our part two of talking with Technical Dave here. We have all sorts of fun. We're talking more animation, freelance stories, stupid people on new grounds, and some of the best, funniest quotes you could possibly get from people leaving comments there. Joined, as always, is Ryan Dunn again. So let's jump back in the fray, see where we left off at, have some fun. After doing animation for a while and just doing all kinds of different voice work and everything like that, I was like, I was looking more into doing voice work stuff. And I was like, you know, I started listening to some guys like voiceovers. I'm like, those are fucking simple. They just literally for one minute just cut a bunch of random ass shit together. Like it doesn't even really sound professional or anything. It's just like, oh, okay, I got a bunch of voice stuff. I can cut that together. So I just made a one minute little demo and just started sending it out to different jobs on like freelance sites and got those gigs. And it was like, you get a couple of them. It's like, oh. $300 and I only had to work for a half an hour? That is so much better than anything animation or video editing. (laughs) Man, fuck you. (laughs) It was just like, this is great. Give me more of those Chinese commercials that I don't know where they're going to. Yeah, totally. (laughs) You just get something like written in Chinese, just try to pronounce it as best you can. You're like, what what Uh, was I saying? Oh, it was actually some racist hate speech. Like, oh. Oh, no. (laughs) They use your picture. You're like, oh, you're now the face of that. Like, great. That's the movement. Well, as long as I get a royalty check, I'm fine with that. (laughs) (laughs) And then sweet dollar dollar bills. Or sorry, you you want you want up bills. No, those Chinese ones, they they would send you a script and I had to rewrite the script because it was in broken English. Oh, yeah. Like, look, it's good. Okay, just trust me. Just it's fine. It's fine. That was almost like, you guys need to pay me overtime for this book and rewrite your script shit. Like, oh my God. <laughs> when I lived in Korea, uh, they would have Koreans like trying to correct you. Like, no, this is the English. You're like, no, it's not. Why don't you just trust me on this one? Okay. <laughs> no, I know a better than you. You fucking asshole. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, I was going to do the Chinese accent. That's not even right. <laughs> Crap. Now I got my head in China and I can't think about Korea. Anyway, the point yeah, yeah, is, damn it. you know, you know how Chinese sound. Oh, nothing scary! That sounds totally... more Japanese. That sounds oh, like no, totally. hey, Japanese stereotypes. That's the joke. No, Japanese sound like you're lifting a house. <laughs> you're pretty much Vegeta, you know, in a sense. <laughs> Great <laughs> dishonor! <laughs> but um, yeah, it would be like, oh, I'm the Korean English teacher, and it's supposed to be like this. Like, I'm the English English speaker, and I'm telling you, it is not. <laughs> yes. Just, I don't care what your little textbook says. Let me tell you how, how we actually talk. <laughs> yes, it's much different than what you think. I actually had this uh, Russian roommate for a little while, and he could he could speak English pretty good. But every every so often, he'd knock on my door, and he was still learning English. And he would say like, uh, "What is the difference between your and your?" You know what I mean? He just it would be like right. the smallest little thing. Like, what do you say more often? Do you say "How are you?" or "How are you?" And it would be like, "Um, I don't." It'd be the, then he like break it down because "How are you?" <laughs> doesn't make as much sense. It just breaks down as of why. I was like. Yeah, I don't fucking know why, man. It just, yeah, <laughs> whatever it feels just, good to you. They'll know what you're talking about, you know? I'm surprised you didn't start questioning it. Become like, maybe it doesn't make sense. I, maybe that's not how it's supposed to be. I don't know. It, it, was, a little bit of, life. it was a little bit of that. I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I don't, because he had like a textbook. He had a tutor. He was going over some stuff. And he was like, how does this work? I'm like, um, dude, you know what? You and all honesty, you're probably better off than me. So yeah, it feels right. Go with that. They'll figure it yeah, out. Just, they'll, they'll get it. Don't worry. Actually, that's that's another thing, right, is that here we're very accustomed to accents. We have a very uh, diverse society. There's people from everywhere. We're accustomed to hearing accents. They are not accustomed to that there. And so when you speak um, in any way different, they're like, whoa, I don't know what you want. I I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So like in Korean, uh, most – if you want to know what a word is in Korean, it's probably just an English word with a racist accent. (laughs) <laughs> like chocolate is chocolate. Really? And you're like, oh, that can't clearly be. That's not what chocolate is. That's just me being offensive. No, that's what chocolate is. So it'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like at the counter pointing for food, and you're like, uh, can I get that? This one? I'm like, huh? Chocolate? What? Cho- chocolate? Chocolate? Cho- oh, chocolate? Oh, 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 chocolate? Uh. You're like, oh, Christ. <laughs> Like, come on! You didn't know that I was—I was pointing at the brown thing and saying chocolate. That wasn't close enough it's for like, you. Yeah, you know it's what I'm saying? like you know, mostly here, it's like you can get pretty much whatever anybody says. Because, and I think that is true. Once again, you're used to so many accents, and maybe it's also because I, I always feel it's due to like TV and stuff. That's why I always feel like sometimes I'll get this New York accent going. I'm not even fucking from New York, but it happens. Yeah, and it happens yeah, to yeah. me just from watching so many fucking gangster flicks and watching a lot of Andrew Dice Clay. 
Yeah, and all this stuff, hey. and it like influences me. I mean, people used to always tell me, because like me and Dunning, well, Dunning comes from a city area, but a, but for the longest time we lived in just like totally like right next to Yosemite National Park area, a smaller town and whatnot. And nobody a lot of times would think that I was actually from there. They'd be like, oh, you sound like you just came from the city or something like that. And it's like, no, I just <laughs> well, watched a know. lot of fucking movies. <laughs> I'm cultured. Yeah, yeah you know, it just kind of happens. You know, I've been to many different places, been to Taiwan, New York. Yeah, you speak with like a New York accent, but only in catch races movies. Hey, can't you see I'm walking here? Oh, I'm man, fucking walking here. Fucking walking here. <laughs> I love this town. Hey, bada bambino, bing bang boom. Wow, that guy's really like from New York. Holy shit. Little bull peep fucking a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. fucked her too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh it's it's weird how that'll happen. Like I had this one co worker who was uh trying to learn all the English possible and he would always have questions for me. And he was always showing movies to the students, you know, movie time, teacher doesn't want to think today, we're putting on a fucking movie. And one time he's like, uh, what does give give her give her a toss? Give a toss? I'm like, in here, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Can you like write it down? And it's like a toss, like T O S S, a toss, a toss. What's the context for this, buddy? And then he walks me over to his computer. He's playing the Expendables 2. <laughs> and this is a grade school. And it's, and then the guy, like one of the guys, I think it's like Sylvester Stallone, where he's like, yeah, you know, she's pretty hot. I guess I give her a toss. I'm like, oh, holy <laughs> shit, dude. Um, <laughs> okay, that, you can't show this to the kids. Okay, <laughs> and he's like, what What does it mean? I'm like, like it, a toss. Like, a, he wants to fuck her, man. He's like, oh, my God, holy shit. Like, whoa. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you can't, don't ask me these questions at school, dude. You're going to get me in trouble. Yeah, he's like, but great American hero Stallone, he could do no oh. wrong. <laughs> oh, Stallone, the kids love Stallone. It's about action. I'm like, no, dude, you, you can't. Because you got to explain these subtitles to them, and I'm not going to be around for that. Just so say. The, the, yeah. the American movie we've seen with Sean was Expendables 2 to the classroom? Yeah, I was like, dude, you did not <laughs> get awesome. cleared with the principal. <laughs> We're supposed to be showing them, like, class. you know, um, Spirited Away and shit like that, or uh, like just whatever popular cartoon they want. They don't give a shit. We're not supposed to be showing them action comedies and uh, drama or anything like, you know, like, for adults. Anything that'll make you think Kaya outside. Yippee motherfucker. I'm like, no, no, okay. Yippee uh, haiku, brother trucker. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> David, tell me what that means. Oh, shit. Uh, it means um, do your homework. Okay. Hey, Billy. Yippee Kaya motherfucker. <laughs> Billy. That's your Korean name, Billy. <laughs> he's, he's Billy Jong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, John Billy. <laughs> John Billy. Yeah. Look, yo. Sorry, Billy. Billy's appear everywhere in the world. We've learned that. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah, that's well, you know, easy enough to say, I suppose. And no matter what, if you don't know a kid's name, just refer to him as Billy. It's Billy. Yo, hey, yeah, fuck the Billy over there. Get out, come on. Like, yeah, they'll come to that name. <laughs> yes. You're Billy now. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. If you say so now. I, I guess I. That's fine. Who the, f Who the fuck this? is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to get in the van now? Yeah. I'm, I'm Billy. Do Billy's get in vans? I, they do. Okay, oh, we're going well. to the Applebee's. Come on. Yeah. Meet up with oh, our oh, Applebee's. <laughs> we're going to meet Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do what? You'll find out. He does do anything. It, you dare him, he does it. You double dog dare him, he'll do it himself. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, some kind of a pussy? <laughs> Some kind of oh, pussy Osama. Oh, oh, Billy's sure. calling out Osama. <laughs> He's like Marty McFly. You you call the him chicken. chicken. You call what him a pussy. Chicken? He does it. No, I calls me chicken. Oh yeah, well I bet you're too much of a pussy to fit the whole Big Ben Tower up your asshole. <laughs> fucking pussy. We'll fucking Osama. do it. We're gonna do it now. The Big Ben Clock Tower in London is missing this week as it was absconded off in the asshole of a well-known terrorist. Can you just see the end of it sticking out of a cave somewhere? <laughs> just poking out. Oh! Oh, fuck! No regrets! <laughs> Hashtag no regrets. I ain't no puss. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. Going in was easy. I mean, I, I, don't, I know it looks like I'm crying here. These are like tears of like utter like awesomeness. It's too much testosterone. It's leaking out of my eyes. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yo, man, I'm going to bottle it up for later use, you know, just in case I'm in the gym pumping some iron, you know. Yo, man, you're crying because you like it. You fucking like it. Fuck you, man. 
Fuck you, man. I'm just because I'm so like fucking manly. It's just like pouring out of me from all organs. I swear to God, Ahmed, I do not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would fuck me. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, them, them timely Osama bin Laden jokes. Well, you know what? I wasn't on a podcast back in 2002, so now's my chance. <laughs> That's okay. Gotta make up for lost time. Oh my God. Okay. I don't think I've mentioned this in a long time. So this is 2002. This is 2000. It's right after, you know, the now to live in. The, the, the kerfuffle when uh, the, those towers went down. Oh, yeah, that. All right. Remember when? And I surely stand up next, next to you in the finner still today. <laughs> so I'm in Texas. Oh, boy. Seeing a friend. And we go to an IHOP. And uh, for some reason, this is the week that they um, were rolling into Iraq. You know, we're at her place and we're watching uh, the tanks rolling through the desert, like live feeds. And it's like, holy shit, this is, this is happening. They're doing this. And uh, so we're, we go to an IHOP uh, some random night because there's nothing else to do in Texas. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Pay $3 for an omelet the size of your torso. And uh, we're hanging out. And for some reason, there's this German couple there. And we're in the parking lot. Ha- they're having a smoke and we're standing. And this German couple stumbles out. And they're like 40 years old. They stumble out totally fucking drunk from the IHOP. <laughs> and they stagger over to us laughing their asses off. And the guy's like, oh, do, do you smell that? Oh, it's Baghdad. And they start laughing hysterically. <laughs> and we're just like, oh, what the fuck? You're, what? Are oh, you, Klaus. Yeah. Whose side are you on here, man? They're like, That's not cool. That's not cool, dude. Oh, my God. Well, they're German, so they're like, fuck you. Yeah, now it's your turn. <laughs> you can see what it's like to be invaded. Man, it was, I was just like, holy shit, man. Like, little, I, I'm no big fan of uh, Saddam here or anything, but that's a little soon. Yeah, people, will, like... people will be dying here. <laughs> Like, well, I'll say it's. I'm. They probably would not have done that if you had some like Texan with a ten gallon like cowboy hat there. Whoa, whoa, what'd you fucking say? Yeah. It's America you're talking about here, and in America we don't even like Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we kick your ass back in World War II? Aren't you supposed to be in fucking jail right now? <laughs> Where were you during uh, the see, war? We, we are only 40 years old. In fact, we, we weren't even born there. Yeah, yeah. You were born. And I'm from and I can smell nasty. I smell nasty all over you. I'm going to take you to where you belong. Kicked your ass in Vietnam and we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Korean. Fucking Koreans and their goddamn Vietnamese war. <laughs> My pappy didn't die on the shores I'm of Oman. I'm you back all the way to Spain. <laughs> he's going back to like the fucking like Franco-Prussian war. He doesn't even know where the hell he's from. All I know is war. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a thing or two, fucking Kaiser. You going back to your czar up in uh, Tokyo. You tell him that John Jefferson from Plano, Texas ain't going to have none of his Nazis <laughs> strolling around here. Now, if you excuse me, I got my moods over my heavy inside, getting cold. <laughs> oh, and they're just my favorite. <laughs> my sister mom's waiting for me on that, too. It's like, boy, he got really gay the second that he got his <laughs> silver Miami. Wait, not fucking gay. Just, there was just that incident with the mirror. I mean, It's not gay if balls don't touch. We've been over this. Yeah, you know, you put a sock over it like you're in the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and then it's all fine and dandy. <laughs> I love them boys. <laughs> I love them boys. Not in that way, but you know what I mean. But you know, I mean, like I, I will say, I stopped going to concerts. You know, after Shock Man, I felt like that was the pinnacle of them, and there was no real point afterwards. And frankly, I, I wasn't that that fond of Californication. If, if we're gonna go go into this. All right, pull up a seat here, Klaus. Let's talk about this. It just pans. Gotta, I, <laughs> let me explain just, America to you. It just pans out. You realize he's been talking to himself for the last ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I gotta talk to you like Autobahn was a great track. Don't get oh shit, where'd they go? What the fuck? Fuck, they were just here. Hey, you you guys see any Nazis in here? There were a, there were a couple of them a second ago. Claus and what's his name? <laughs> we'll call him Schlitz. Yeah, Schlitz, that sounds about right. Or Schlocky. I like that. My I don't want dog no I fucking, had ones. <laughs> no fucking Wolfensteins walking around my town. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm BJ Blaskowitz, and I'm going to fuck some shit up. Damn yeah, right. And he's Texan. He's a Texan. He's a Jewish Polish Texan. Yeah, he takes out Nazis. He takes out Nazis in the 60s. I've seen I'm it. A fucking murder machine. I love that boy. I love my son. I haven't told him that lately. I, I <laughs> tell him I'm proud of him. God, I'm he, proud. he doesn't know I exist, but. I mean, I haven't. I've never met him, but I. And I know where his mother lives, and I'm supposed to send her money. I should do that. You know, just slipped my mind, you know. CMT marathon kind of happened, and yeah, just lost track after. Oh, he's, shit. I'm missing the invasion. We're CNN. <laughs> <laughs> just, wa- just watching Big Foam Hand USA. <laughs> Big Foam Hand USA. Ooh, I could use some ham now, too. <laughs> oh, it's over my hammy again. Shit. Oh, God, it's an endless cycle. I can't leave the IHOP. This is like Looper. <laughs> <laughs> a younger Texan man comes up. All right, look, I'm you from the past. Don't let me try to explain this to you. It won't make sense. I have to kill you. <laughs> no, you can't kill me. If you kill me, the Nazis win. <laughs> Whoa, check it. this out. We are the Nazis. Oh, no. But what about my wife? She was Jewish. She's dead now. <laughs> and Hitler. We gotta go into the future because that's where Hitler lives. You always wondered why they never found his body. It's because he time traveled out of there. Did you <laughs> ever watch Danger Five, either of you? I've no. seen a few episodes of it. Like the option is I always love. kill Hitler, and as always, kill Hitler. For God's sakes, woman, shut your damn mouth. <laughs> that show's amazing. Yeah, I've only seen a few episodes, but I love what I saw. I never saw that. What did that appear on? Um, Australian television. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's the whole, there's the thing. yeah look at look it up there's the whole pit like she's like woman like just like shut up and have a cigarette like puts a lo- loads of fucking cigarette into oh, a gun yeah. shoots at this chick it just goes in her mouth that'll shut you up <laughs> yeah and the yeah so it's uh it's a show ripping on like the 60s spy team kind of thing and the story is that world war ii never ended it just kept going and hitler kept getting away so the world's still at war but things are basically running as usual so they've assembled this crack team of an american an australian a brit a french guy and a german and they're going to uh or sorry a russian and they're going to get together and hunt down hitler every episode and so this uh colonel with a bird for a head is like sorry the bird's head not like a whole bird just sitting on it whatever so he's like uh well, you gotta go and find his uh, his special army of girls covered in solid gold. And, as always, kill Hitler. And so then, at the end of every episode, Hitler dives out of a glass window and runs away. And it's brilliant. And then season two, it's set in the 80s. And everything is an 80s cliche, like car chases. Oh, I see and that. A-team like. Yeah, it's very... Well, this show sounds amazing. I'm surprised I've never run across this yet. It's fucking radical. And I will say that season one is better, but season two definitely has its charm. Huh. I guess I, yeah, I just, I, I liked the 60s kitsch better than the 80s kitsch because mm-hmm. uh, I, I expected the 60s of the show. It's kind of where they just skip the 70s. Yeah, I was really hoping they'd do like a black exploitation action film kind of thing and then go to the 80s. But yeah. hey, honestly, with this show, I wouldn't be surprised if they went back to the 70s. Yeah, back to the 70s. I'll be down for checking that show now, out. Now, is this yeah, show I brand new, pretty much? Is, this, is it on its second season right now, or uh, going on third? Season, well, you know how TV works now. A season comes out when it's ready, right? The season comes out when we goddamn right feel like it. Yeah. It came out, I think, four or five years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, it's Australian, and it was funded entirely by the Australian government, so they know <laughs> what they're doing. Um, you can like trust that an show, Australian. Yeah, well, when it comes to comedy, they, they are very supportive, apparently. Uh, they also give a lot of money to another great Australian... A uh, bit uh, anti Donna, and they are fucking gold. Huh? I haven't They're heard of that a, one either. A trio of guys, Auntie Donna. They do all kinds of web shorts, and they are fantastical. All sorts of good things to check out there, then, huh? Yeah, I'm just giving you homework. I know you are. I always feel bad. I'll be like, sure nowadays, to study up on that. Nowadays, it seems like when people tell me, like, to you know, watch certain things, even like YouTube things, they'll like pass along a video. And it's like five minutes long. Sometimes you're kind of like, <laughs> whew, mm, five, five minutes. minutes. Whoa, whoa. That in, yeah. l- l- let me schedule that one out two weeks from now, and then uh, we'll see about it. You know, I could really play a lot of Pokemon Go in five minutes. So, I'll think about it. <laughs> hey, did you watch that thing? Yeah, and I loved all of it. So if you ask me for a favorite part, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what it was. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that title card they had on there. That looked really cool. <laughs> really nice fonts. Yeah, I like that. I think I kind of got the whole gist from that point. You know, I didn't think I needed to watch the rest of it because I thought that really explained it there. Hey, you man, know? watch this video. Uh, my Wi-Fi is not working. I can't load videos. 
Just use your data. Ooh, my data plan's expensive. Yeah, I can't, no. you know. See, I, and I always feel bad kind of like when I say that because I'm like, it's that sort of thing. It's like, okay, I want you guys to watch my video, but I don't really have time to watch <laughs> your <laughs> video. Okay, I know this video uh, you sent me. Totally, I'm not going to watch it, but you have to watch this video I'm sending you right now. Yeah, because I fucking pretty... created it, and I just put fucking blood, sweat, and tears into there, and now you got to fucking watch it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, your video Essentially. you did? Yeah, I'll get around to it. Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> Am I in that one? Ooh, I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, I just like to kind of hear my own voice <laughs> loud over the speakers. Well, I definitely know that feeling. I put a video up a while ago, and one of the comments was, this guy just likes to hear himself talk. That's a good comment. Like, uh, that's not incorrect. What's your point, sir? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. You know, I'm, I'm going to put that on a poster. I think it was on your Facebook or something. You posted something like um, the, uh, um, I should clarify, the Technical Day Facebook, not your personal, like, oh, yeah, your Facebook, fa you know, but anyway. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Uh, your tech on the Technical Day Facebook, I think you posted something like, this is the best review I ever got. It was something on Newgrounds. Oh, course. yeah. I, and it was uh, some I, guy yeah. like, you're such a little entitled fucking asshole who doesn't know how <laughs> fucking yeah. lucky he is and doesn't, if I fucking hate your kind of people. And it's like, I think it was the episode where you guys go to the club and you're talking. It was like, I think it was about um, your friends getting married at the end and having the oh, kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Which I really yeah, love God, that. It's a very uplifting episode. But you remember I, that comment? I, I occasionally will post my favorite comments and – uh they're always the meanest fucking things. And it's not because I'm trying to like, this guy said a mean thing. Fuck He's, him. It's because they're funny. <laughs> like how angry Like they somebody get. put some thought into that. Like they're really funny. And some of them are just so abstract. Some of them are clearly projection. Uh, and some of them are just so creative in their hatred that like, I, I like this. Please give me more of your insane, crazy hate because it makes me giggle. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, you don't know me as a complete person. I don't care what you say about me, but it does make me laugh. <laughs> sometimes the best comments are either the ones that are really praising or the ones that are just full on hate because they just almost make you just laugh somebody sat there and they had to think about what they were writing they probably yeah. pulled up a thesaurus so they can look smart to all their other like web friends well it's also like i don't know if i could like love anything as much as some of these commenters hate the shit that we put out you know what i mean like oh yeah there's, there's so much like God, I don't know if I could put that much energy into anything, but I kind of respect that level of hatred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people will do a lot of effort for things they hate. It, it, it's amazing. They just, it, I just call it, that's like the free time that I wish. I wish I had that amount of free time. That's got to be a good place for that guy's life. His life probably sucks. Really, having all that free time, I just think the possibilities would be done. <clears throat> I had one uh, about uh, friends and how, you know, you just got to – these are the friends you're going to make in college because – there's only so many people you're around and uh, look, unless you want to be alone, like you got to open up, you got to be friends with these people, right? You can't just be like, well, these aren't perfect friends for me. So they're not friends. And, um, and here's a comment. No ass hat. People who don't automatically group with the nearest generally attractive and thoroughly interchangeable new group of friends aren't waiting for people just like them. We're waiting for people who are willing to fucking spend time with us. Fuck you and your friends on your fucking sexy exploitations into the great sexual unknown together <laughs> and your pseudo bullshit non-intellectual acknowledgement of your vague understanding of our underlying animal nature. Fuck your slideshow. Fuck your sexy female friends who somehow aren't enough <laughs> for you. And fuck your fucking rich bitch college education with, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you and your worthless holes until you die or feel feelings. You die first. I hate you. I fucking hate you. I hope you die. Go to hell. Oh, my God. That is a I, poster right there. That is. We know, like, I think I, the bad comments we got, they don't even get close to that Like, one. My, my sexy friend, my sexy female friends and my sexy expeditions. Like, look, dude, I know you're, you're jealous that you didn't get invited to all the orgies in college. <laughs> Don't take it out on me. Apparently, he didn't get invited to college whatsoever. I sense a basement in a Naruto poster. Yeah, I, like, what the fuck? It's, yeah. I don't, and, and I said, this is legit probably the best review I've ever gotten. <laughs> and I also see a big thesaurus sitting next to this guy, too. And you know what I love is that he still gave it two stars. 
So he sort of liked it, though. He kind of liked it. <laughs> well, probably deep down inside, it's like, you know, this makes me really pissed off. But, you know, I do kind of wish I had that life. <laughs> but it was it was kind of okay. Guys. It like, was kind of okay. I, I mean, like, it. I will say the coloring wasn't so bad. I got to admit, I like the colors. <laughs> you know, bright colors do make me happy. And the way he draws his sexy female friend. <laughs> well, you know, it's not really the sexy female friend. It's that sexy other male friend he's got there in the corner that. Give me the eye in half the picture. So yeah, just freeze frame that. Scream grab. Oh, and God. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Let's yeah, no, I, I love shit like that because it's just so absurd. Well, it's that kind of thing. Like the two, like the two best reactions you can ever get, like I always think like at a film festival or if, if you're ever showing your video in public, is these are my two favorite ones. If you can get people to go like, oh, my God, that's fucking amazing. That's always good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the other reaction I love so much is when people just get such an odd look. They're like, what the fuck is this? And they end up walking out halfway through. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll almost take that reaction more because I felt like I did something really impressive if we can fucking get them to walk on out. Because <laughs> yeah. they have no idea what the hell is they're in for. Yeah, you don't want anyone to have a sort of like, oh, what'd you think of this thing I made? Yeah, you know. You know, I mean, I like the like, color. Basically no serious um, feelings one way or the other. Yeah, because then you're like, oh, fuck. Keep like, going. Please just keep trying. You know, just go. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someday you'll get there. But, you know, till then, it's OK. No, no, <laughs> yeah. Don't use the word OK. Don't use the word OK. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me a, a serious feeling. One Say you hate it. Say you hate it. Say it should be burned <laughs> on a stake. I think at least I made you feel something. Jeez. No, that burn on a stake. That sounds like that would take some effort. Ooh, a stake. <laughs> or a cross. I guess that's what I was going with. Or a pike. Or you could put a steak that's on a barbecue and burn it on there. <gasps> and Possibilities are endless. That's, that's fucking <laughs> Possibilities are endless. But yeah, good you comments, should... bad comments, nothing in between. Mm-hmm. That's right. Or you know, or you just get the usual comments like, "Make the fucking drunk Batman ten. What the fuck <laughs> are you doing doing a fucking podcast? That was great. More, <laughs> more though. Make more. You know that more now. That took you six months. It was good, but. Hopefully the next one's out in the next week because I don't got fucking time for this shit. It should be new and free and immediately broadcast into my brain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm not paying for it. Did I mention that? <laughs> also, I kind of hate you. Just get it done. Yeah, fuck your Patreon page. <laughs> fuck your sexy fuck. friends and your sexy escorts. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you uh, until you die or feel feelings first. Uh, you should frame that just gotta frame that yeah comment. i think that should be like on a big huge fat motivational poster to hang up somewhere with like a picture of like some waves coming over a sunset you know yeah give it a nice little background maybe somebody running on the beach or something like almost like it just says motivation or something like that on the top and then all of a sudden it's like oh but then you read this paragraph and it's completely the opposite it's like in wedding font <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. it's nice it's like something you could give to your grandparents to say can do it you can stay alive <laughs> you're not yeah you know, i feel a little cold but you'll make it <laughs> you know i did that by once myself by accident though and it was by accident um do you know maddox uh no it's greatest page in the universe it's like a, a long-running web uh web page apparently we well, don't know anything it's like a, a <laughs> blog critiquing shit anyway he's been around forever and he's very funny and uh, he's got this persona of being you know, very angry, critical. Uh, it's It's been around for a while. He's been around like almost as long as the internet itself. So he had a podcast for a while mm-hmm. with his friend. And they would complain about various things. It was like what they hated the most at the time. And his one friend said he hated apologies because they're bullshit. And he said apologies are just things you say to people to get them to shut up. Like you don't have to mean them. You just say sorry and they go away. And I, I left in the comments and I, and I was like, this these are the words of a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't mean he's a sociopath. I'm saying like, hey, careful, because that's how sociopaths think, right? Like, you don't got to care about people's feelings. You're just, uh... yeah. And so the yeah. next episode is he's like, well, what's your your uh, what's your complaint this week? He's like, my complaint is David Rossi, <laughs> <laughs> who uh, and his his complaint that week was that I called him a sociopath, and he went on about it for a while, and apparently I ruined his fucking day. He's like, I feel things, okay? I feel rage. Um, fuck you. You, you're like, my problem is these armchair psychologists who think they know me. I'm like, oh, dude, I was just, okay. <laughs> like, I thought it was funny. You gave that guy some material. That's what you did. Like, I did. Boy, it, all it took was one comment and boom. He, dude, he had a half an hour special right there. Just got to be grateful for that. Comments. I should charge him. My rate is you know, 50 bucks an hour. There was a fun, <laughs> funny comment that I got once that 
somebody who listened to our show, they're all like, okay, Spencer just likes, he just likes these movies way too fucking much. He's always fucking positive on every single thing that comes out. He just loves the hell out of it. How dare you? And I think, I'm like, I love that comment. I want that comment. Like, that's a great one. Because I guess got to this point after a while, you know, I just fucking like just about anything. You know, if a movie comes out, why am I going to hate it? People put like time and effort into this shit. You know what I mean? And I'll try to look for the best in it. And if I don't end up liking it, well, hell, it wasn't made for me. That's all I got to say. Well, I do like that there's this one guy um, online, and it's it's kind of cute. Like, it's it's innocent. We all love the angry video game nerd. He's very good at what he does. But there's the, And there's many imitators, of course, there's going to be, mm-hmm. because we were angry about things. But there's this one guy called the happy video game nerd. <laughs> and he only plays games that he likes, and he talks, and he's just like, he's cheerful. I'm like, bless you, child. You know, that's good, though, because you know, I think that's, that's the thing, too. I think that's what kind of, after, you know, you, know, you look at Newgrounds, because that's a place where they're, Great website. A lot of hate there, though. There's a lot of oh, like 13 yeah. year old kids that have this pent up rage for some odd reason. They live in America and because they're 13 year old kids, they just, yeah. they're, I have a f- emotions inside. I don't know what to do with them. I want to fuck everything and kill. Everything. I'm gonna take it out on a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds that make my free <laughs> shit. <laughs> but you know, it's like after a while, you see that you're just like, God. He's like, dude, this guy. Like, the thing I always hate the most is you'll see like an animation. The guy literally says in the comments, "This is my first animation. Hope you yeah. enjoy." And they're like, oh, this is fucking garbage. This is horrible. The animation sucks. It says the guy's fucking first animation. What are you expecting out of this thing? Like, I'm expecting Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg doesn't animate. Yeah, but I expect (laughs) the quality of Steven Spielberg. (laughs) There's something to the aspect aspect of like, thanks for wasting my time. It's like, yeah, what, from like, looking I watched Brony, it three Brony times or whatever? it was shit every time. It's like, well, why did you watch it three times? <laughs> yeah, I watched it 73 times on repeat consecutively. And I got to say, I didn't like this very much. And in fact, kill yourself. <laughs> there was a moment at, at View 67 that I thought I almost liked it. I didn't I realize <laughs> I was just watching an ad that was playing over your video. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, I, and you got to really give it to animators because they're, they all generally speaking, uh, like the online shit, they're generally self-taught done completely in their free time for no money. And they really tend to have a passion for it. Cause you're not doing that. Just no one's doing it cause they have to, right? Like you're doing cause like you, love I got it. two hours to kill. I guess I'll just animate something. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> right. They love it. And, uh, and I have lots of, an- even though I'm not an animator, most of my art friends are animators because, uh, that's, I don't know. It just happened anyway. So they're great. And, um, I've really seen progression in a lot of them. And just in like the couple years I've known them, like, wow, you got really, really, really good. From, you know, practicing and making videos instead of uh, bitching about other people who aren't getting better. Funny how that right? works. Like, this is fucking <laughs> shit. Like, well, yeah, you make shit. And then eventually you're making not shit. Yeah, it's, it's all like this trial and error and, you know, and that's just how it goes. And fucking it just gets better and better as time goes on. And But it is weird. There's people, it's just, people just love just to kick other people down. I don't know why exactly. And. You well, know. I mean, some people gener- like genuinely do not improve, and you're like, wow, what's that about? But most people, they have to be shitty so that they can improve. Yeah, no, that's how you – it's like you know, you're going to figure out everything by doing that. You go, oh, okay, well, I see how this shape's supposed to be or how these lines are supposed to go or how these tools work and carry on. But, yeah, it's just like – that's why, like, whenever I see somebody's, you know, first kind of animations or whatnot, it's kind of like – I want to give them like a good credit so that they go hey you did a good job keep up the good work because you yeah. know what they're gonna look at that and be like oh fuck this guy watched my video liked it boom there was another thing i have talked about this on the podcast before but i've been doing this like berlin international film judge thing or whatever they invited me to do that for a film festival there and they just sent me all the stuff online and at first it was like you look like oh fuck 13 and a half hours well okay i'll get a couple of <laughs> it's like i do not have that much time in a month to like, spend watching random ass movies from europe but it's funny, like, I look, you can see all the other judges and what they put down. Dude, these people, it's like, they're all like two, three out of ten. And I'm, some oh, of these wow. videos are actually, like, Jeez. they're legitimately pretty good. Like, I'm not Something has to be really fucking incompetent to be a two out of ten. I know, I'm like, dude, there was the only video, and I, I said this to Dunning, and I was like, the only video that I, I didn't even vote on because I didn't know what to fucking say was there was this weird one. I don't know what fucking country it was from, but it was a guy. <laughs> It was, it was a two and a half minute long video of a guy putting on like creepy clown makeup. And then he was putting on like a construction worker outfit and oh, yeah. going back and forth between this. And I, I, and it just had him like whistling, like, <laughs> and it was just like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, I just didn't even know what to say. I, I, I was like, well, 
I don't know. Back. <laughs> Let's watch another one. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, it was just like. Uh, well, they made something. You could say that. Yeah, I, I could have said that. They finished it. I panicked and I just escaped. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Shit, shit. What do I do? He's looking at me. Fuck. Abort. Abort. <laughs> and I feel kind of. Sometimes I do like the lazy thing where this is. This is. You watch someone's video and then you're kind of like, oh, okay, so I see what's kind of going on here. Skip ahead a couple of times. Oh, okay, so they're still yeah. walking through the forest. Skip, skip, skip. Oh, look, now they're in a city and we're done. Oh, okay, well, that was pretty <laughs> good for what it was. I got to speed watch these, you know, realistically, how am I going to get through this stuff? And then half of them, like, they're in a different language, but nobody put down subtitles. So I got to kind of oh, yeah, make yeah. heads or tails what's going on. My favorite thing is one time that you you're talking about you went to this one film festival I'm like well because you entered in like a sitcom you you made this like little uh, the Avalon you made, it's on YouTube I uh, I think you entered that in and you're talking about the things you're going against like yeah yeah there was uh shit what was it there was like a there's a Chinese girl she was riding a bike there's a piano play I don't fucking remember you know <laughs> it's like that sounds like a that sounds like a film school movie right there. No, that because every single time I've seen film fest, lots of times I notice that nobody fucking makes comedy very often. That is such a forgotten genre in film fest. Well, comedy is fucking hard, and that's like what's well, people have always told me that in my entire life. They've always been like, comedy's fucking hard, and since that's mostly always been the main thing that I've always made, I guess it just kind of me. I was like, I don't. I guess it is hard. I mean, I I find the things well, that's around because me. you're funny, <laughs> and maybe but that's people, just it. People who aren't funny can't like you can't learn being funny. I mean, you can learn how to perfect your timing and that shit, but if you're just a not funny person, you'll never get it. And I think that's sort of it, because I remember, like, I used to, when I first kind of heard that, people were like, oh, comedy's fucking hard. I heard it from a lot of European people. That that was where I kind of got, I'm like, really? I'm really like, German? No, I've heard it from... Just like, very straight face, like... Mm, I want to so say it was hard. from my, the Estonian friends in San Francisco. I, I think they said... That sounds like them. They told me they're like, comedy's hard, and, you know, these guys made some badass action films. Like, that was, like, what they kind of came in with. And then, of course, all I got is, like, fucking stupid comedy videos. Like, oh, that's, that's all we did was comedy the whole time because, you know, it was easy. <laughs> that was our reason behind why we did comedy. Felt like, well, action, nobody's going to buy a bunch of fucking 16-year-olds with cameras doing cool shit action-wise. You got to throw mm. some comedy in there. That's the only way it's going to work. And then you kind of look back on it. You're like, well, the comedy only works for 16-year-olds, but whatever. <laughs> it's a learning phase, God damn it. That's what high school's yeah. all about. High school camera and whatever you can use around you. Yeah, I wish I had the tapes I had in high school just for like my own personal, uh, you know. I got most. I, li I literally have most of ours. I, there's there's uh, only a couple of them I don't have, but I got like is, just uh, random DVDs and you know Hi8 camera tapes that back up whatever we did back then. But most where was I going with that roundabout thing? Oh yeah, it was the film fest. It was there, and it was like in San Francisco. And yeah, there was just a bunch of these really like artsy, artsy artsy fucking videos and then we threw a fucking sitcom in there with a laugh track and everything in it and it just it it looks so goofy or some of my favorite ones we've thrown our drunk batman ones in the film festivals and you'll and they all i love where they'll put them they'll literally smash it sandwich it in between some real dark fucking depressing ass movie and then all of a sudden it's just like booty booty boo boo i'm drunk man open on tv I was, we're uh, doing this to keep people from killing themselves in the audience. We just yeah, got to They're like, them, we but... thought dolphin fucking would go really good after some guy jerking off and hanging himself. <laughs> With sad people. Our, now. our uh, like, there's one where, I, yeah, the one you're talking about, I did a Q&A at that, you know, just like, oh, all right, everybody who worked on the movie, come on up. And uh, I was at this one. And I just went up and, you know, the guy next to me was like, yeah, the movie was inspired because I tried to kill myself once. Oh, wow. uh, this happened. That happened. I then I just come to him. Well, we just like Batman a lot. We just thought it'd be funny to do like <laughs> alcoholic, you know. And then it goes over to him. So, what are your main inspirations? Well, I really like Christopher Nolan, uh, David Fincher, uh, you know, um, David Lynch. Like we come over to us. Oh, well, I like South Park and like you know Simpsons. <laughs> you know, I'll go back to him. Yeah. You know? And now he's just thinking like, no, I really do want to kill myself. No one gets me. No one gets me. <laughs> you know, the worst part is when you go to those film festivals, you almost don't feel like you fit in because everybody there's a very prestigious like you know, oh, film yeah. is an art. You know, you have to have all the technical stuff down. Well, or that's how I feel good. about other artists a lot of the time. Like they take themselves way, way too seriously. And that's why I. That's why I. I like hanging out with people that are mostly about comedy because nobody really fucking cares. They're like, hey, as long as it's fucking funny and we're having a good time, it doesn't make a fucking difference. Right, right, we got it. If, if someone took comedy uh, like seriously, no one would probably like doing comedy with them. No, yeah, and that's what I mean. And I think it's funny. You go to those film festivals, you just meet those guys, and they get all like picky and stuff, and they're like, they'll look at your video like, 
well, what was funny about that? And maybe deep inside, they're like, to resist the urge to laugh. Resist the urge to <laughs> yeah, laugh. exactly. Don't you know laugh. What I mean? Don't laugh. That was a poop joke. I know it was. Deep down, just don't laugh. Deep down, like, to... you're above this. You're above this, damn it. I'm trying to imagine what a Lars von Trier comedy movie would be. <laughs> oh, God, that would be amazing. Yeah. It would be so, like, dark, but funny. I like dark funny. The dark and funny is one of my favorite things. That's why our tagline for our Wallaby the Rabbit one is cute rabbits, dark comedy. Right. Short to the point. It, it is, because that's what it is. You look at these two rabbits, and at first glance, it's like, hey, they look kind of cute and friendly. And then next thing you know, you got one rabbit fucking stabbing a bird in the throat with a knife, and it's just how <laughs> I <like> is. <laughs> I know. I hate when someone doesn't appreciate dark comedy. It's like, that's not funny. That's sad. I'm like, no, come on. Don't you get it? The guy got murdered on the way home to see his new child. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's just like drum. His whole family is sad and he's dead. That's why I, I, we always say the best comedy comes from dramas. I think that's just. Oh, yeah. It, and I think the reason why is because they're not writing it. They're like, okay, we got to have a funny line every three lines. So yeah, make it, sure you, you get that. a couple of seconds. Yeah. So then you kind of get a bunch of like petered out jokes. But when a drama, it's like, well, fuck. When we throw a comedy line in there, you watch 45 minutes of seriousness, and then we'll throw something fucking hilarious in there. Yeah, and it acts as like a catharsis to the, the drama. Yeah, and it's and it's a surprise, because it's like, you're like, oh, fuck, I didn't expect that. And that's why I've always just thought that that's the funniest shit. It's like, especially the, the darker and the deeper a movie gets, the funnier lots of times they can become. Yeah. Darren Aronofsky, uh, for example. Yeah, Darren Aronofsky movies are always hilarious, and that's why I love them. Fucking Out of the Furnace. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez, that sounds intense. Did you see Out of the Furnace? It has oh. one of the funniest intros I've ever seen in the movie. It's I, got Woody Harrelson. He's sitting at a drive-in theater, and he's there with some other girl, and he's looking at her, and he's all kind of this methed out hillbilly <laughs> guy. Okay. Just Woody Harrelson as can be, and she's got this hot, like hot dog sitting there. He's like, you're going to eat that fucking hot dog? <laughs> and she's like, no, I don't think she's like, you go ahead and eat the fucking hot dog. <laughs> And then she's like, no, I, I don't want the hot dog. You eat the fucking hot dog. And he grabs this hot dog and starts stuffing it in her mouth. And she's like, she's like no, no, no. You're like, you eat the fucking hot dog. And then it's in her mouth and like almost all the way down, takes her head, slams it against the glove box. Jesus. <laughs> Gets out of the fucking car. And some guy's like, hey, hey, is something going on there? He's like, yeah, I'll fucking kick your ass right now. <laughs> I can't remember. There's other stuff in there too that's hilarious too. Where he's just like, before he's talking about up. this car. He's like, he's like, you're way too fucked up to drive home. He's like, yeah, this fucking baby drives itself. Oh, and then of she, course. Then, then she laughs at him. He said, that's what starts it. She's like, what's so fucking funny? She's like, oh shit, um, uh, nothing. That's what the hot dog <laughs> thing start. Like that's right. what got him off. Like, what? <laughs> what? Uh, just I was just laughing at a joke. You know, that wasn't a fucking joke, bitch. So, you know, okay. Hey, you laughing at me? Well, I see you laughing. There's so there's no one here. You must be laughing at me. No example. It's like that, that kind of situation. Yeah, do I look, yeah. am I a fucking clown? Do I amuse you? What do you, what am I like, uh, clown funny or Rita Rudna funny? <laughs> Rita Rudna funny. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> back when Family Guy was still funny. Back when Family Guy was, yeah. Yeah, back, back in the, the good old days, but. Back, back in the day. I mean, it was never genius, but it, actually, you know, they, they did have some episodes here and there where I will give them credit for uh, doing things. Like well, you know the ep the uh, the episode on abortion they couldn't air that was actually something you'd oh, never yeah. see on any other show except maybe South Park but they would have done it more satirically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably true there. Like well, this like was the a more realistic scenario. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, I think those first three seasons before the show got canceled originally, those are all the little bit more legitimate Family Guy seasons. After well, yeah, that, because after that they had carte blanche. Yeah, so it changed. It's like we'll never get canceled twice. Yeah, so it kind of changed the whole dynamic of the show a bit, and I don't know. That's why. Whenever I watch something like Family Guy or American Dad even, like sometimes I, I look at it and I go, it's almost just strictly entertainment. I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of it. Where right. when you watch South Park or The Simpsons or King of the Hill, there's always almost like a message in there. This is almost going to like, really you got to make sure you have your fucking message <laughs> and you repeat it. But you walk away with something at the end of the day that you're like, you know, I take no, absolutely. away. Either I learn something, I feel better about something, something happens in there. And I think that's what's missing sometimes in Family Guy and American Dad. Not saying that they don't have it every once in a while, yeah. but lots of times it's just joke, 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 over. Yeah, it's there to make you laugh. It's really not there to make you think. Whereas, uh, like South Park, I don't think anyone would really disagree. It's fucking genius. Um, they, any, yeah, well, I mean, exactly. anyone who disagrees will see, like, the surface-level toilet humor, and they go, oh, it's gross. There's nothing more to it. But, like, that's the veneer to cover the genius below it. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Every episode has something. Every episode has something in there. It's, you know, it never fails to at least teach you something or at least you some value. And that's why if I disagree with it, I'll still be like, wow, they presented a decent argument. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've always held South Park up as pretty much like one of my all time favorite animated shows. Like I've been I watched it since day one when it came out. I was in the third grade. Those kids were in the third grade. It was like perfect. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I I watched the very first episode when it first aired with my mother because it was like, it's a cartoon (laughs) right back to that thing. Cartoons (laughs) for kids. Yeah. And then like, wow, this is really fucking gay and retarded. And I'm like, oh, my mom's like right here. And then like Kenny gets killed and you're just like. I'm uh, laughing. I'm not even trying to hold it back. It's like, fuck it. This is hilarious. And she hasn't left the room uncomfortable just yet. Uh, even though it was still thing. like, well, <laughs> I, probably, I probably shouldn't be. Uh, well, I don't want to be. I don't want to be like an uncool mom. I guess I'll just let this happen. <laughs> See where this goes. <laughs> well, when I was in school, it was only me and one other kid that could watch South Park. Nobody else's parents would let him watch it. Oh, really? Yeah, it was because I don't know. Everybody was just like. And they would come up to my mom and be like, man, Tammy, you're so cool. It's like, I wish I could live at your house and watch South Park and stuff. Like, they just assumed that, like, I live in this holy grail town because right. yeah. no matter what, it's like, my parents are like, well, uh, I guess he can watch it. Somebody else is probably just going to show it to him anyways, or he'll watch it at the <laughs> else's house. <laughs> you know, he's... He's going to get it from somewhere. It may as well be at home. Yeah, he's... With drugs. <laughs> yeah. We're, you know, if he's going to smoke the meth, at least I'd rather have him do it at home where it's the safe. Top drawer, sweetie. You know where the needles are. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they're clean. Make sure they're clean. Yeah, we don't want you getting AIDS now. <laughs> Just smarter. This way. He's like going your Uncle to do- Danny. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Danny has AIDS. Nobody likes him anymore. Don't want to be <laughs> like that. It's not just that he has AIDS. He keeps trying to give it to everyone. Yeah, he's just he just stabs himself and then tries to stab everybody else. He's running he's around like with Freddy Krueger. It's rude. <laughs> he has the worst sense for April April Fool's Day. Yeah, when we're all asleep. One, two, eight is coming for you. <laughs> Three, four, gonna rape your door. <sighs> Uncle Danny, not again. <laughs> he's he's tying the fucking AIDS needles to his fingers like a glove. <laughs> oh jeez. There's a series of movies that doesn't take itself seriously. <laughs> Have you ever seen AIDS the, Uncle? The, AIDS Uncle, you know. <laughs> you know, family friendly fun, just like how you remember it. Man, I love AIDS Uncle 3. <laughs> Hospital of Doom. Oh god. It actually got a little had a little got a little more heart there near the end. It was one of those things that was, seemed like it was going to start to sell out. I'm like, "Oh, wait, I remember why I like the series now." Well, I mean, it was for the kids, right? They had to yeah, put some yeah. stuff in there. And they even threw in a shining joke and everything. And there was this huge thing of blood going down the hall, just filled with AIDS. And people were drinking it and sucking it up. And oh, everybody had AIDS. I think end. it was a real a real metaphor for the AIDS crisis of the 80s. But I'm going to say straight up that once AIDS uh, Uncle 4 came out, I was fucking done with it. Yeah, yeah once, once he went into space and then went back in time. <laughs> well, you know, you pick up like this this director who does like parody work and it takes over the other director's work. And you're like, dude, this you're changing it into your thing. Okay, I want the original AIDS uh, uncle director back, AIDS Johnson. <laughs> See, and the thing was, in, in AIDS Uncle 4, it just it started to become funny. The whole time, he was cracking jokes left and right. Where was the scariness? Why is this not scary anymore? I know. It really was sort of like... Chasing, pes- tra- trying to give aliens AIDS the whole time, too. Yeah. Well, it becomes like a parody of itself, like all things that run on for too long. Yeah. And then there comes that point where it comes back around again. <laughs> Like Friday the 13th, part eight. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, is that where they got Jackie Earl Haley to pay, play AIDS uncle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, we all remember that, that Freddy, the, versus yeah. Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason versus AIDS dad or AIDS grandpa. <laughs> AIDS grandpa. AIDS well, he, well, no, because he got older by that That's point. the prequel. AIDS, <laughs> AIDS zero. You know, a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, I've never really watched uh, Freddy or Jason movies. I, I want to have an opinion on this. Did you never so have my, that point as a kid where you just watched a copious amount of horror movies? No, I was a little fucking pussy bitch as a kid. Oh, okay. So you're like, right. I'm here. Yeah, I'm, I'm like making up for it. Like, I, I literally was afraid of Castlevania and Zelda. Like, the first Zelda game scared me. No, I kid you not. I will say this. Castlevania, the first one we ever had, me and my buddy, was the one on Sega Genesis. And whenever that music played, I don't know what it was. It was just like, oh, fuck, we can't play this at night, man. We got to, like, wait till it's like. Noon. I know. It's, it's really impressive how this shit can get to you. It's weird. So when you, I, I feel like if you try to explain that to a kid nowadays that like you got scared, especially when it's like a regular Nintendo game could scare you. Oh, yeah. And that's true. It's like, dude, you'd play some of those games, like play the Friday the 13th game on regular Nintendo. When you're a kid, it's like, oh, fuck, Jason's going to appear at some point. He's going to appear because it's just random how he'd come out. And uh-huh. then when he appears, it's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. 
Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Oh, it's like, uh, you watch Gravity Falls? He, uh, no, actually, I, I know of the show. I haven't seen They it. have the Halloween episode, and the uncle's like trying to scare kids. They're like, he's like, come on, this is the scariest thing you've ever seen. And they're like, <laughs> no, it's not. And then they like hold up a, a phone, and they show him like some jump scare video on YouTube, and he shits his pants. <laughs> oh my gosh not, not that's hilarious but you know what I mean right? but like, what were you saying you're, you're going in you're saying you never saw Freddy or Jason oh right right so I was I was, I never really saw any of that shit because I was a little fucking coward and I was like I should get into this you know they're uh, cultural icons so my roommate had all like he fucking buys every movie like, he doesn't rent movies he just buys movies That that's uh, like, how we were we had like this arms race going forever where you yeah. know <laughs> I have about 3,000 movies or something like that it's Jesus. ridiculous I would like so to I, say, this is going to seem off topic for a second, but I would like to say he was going to the pawn shop so much that he was actually starting to have, you were actually starting to have a crush on the lady <laughs> selling you DVDs. <laughs> Not because, I mean, she was, she was all right looking. She wasn't amazing. Yeah. She was like she in was her forties or something like that. But it was like, cause she, he just like all those because DVDs she was the around. Source of movies, yeah. She was, she became my life. I just kept going to the pawn shop over and over and, there she was. There was the DVDs, and I would buy walk out with twenty five of them or so at a crack. Wow. It, yeah, yeah. There, there was a period. It was like, yeah, a lot of movies were being bought so much that one somebody came up to me before, or one of my friends, they were like, "I think you like the buying process more than you like the watching." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, you know, I that might be kind of true. I there's something magical. I love coming out with this huge stack. Like, look at this. Look at all this stuff. I got. I got like every These genre in this mine. one stack." <laughs> Oh, there's got to be there's got to be like a, a website somewhere like chick that works at pawn shop selling DVDs. There's got to be like a fetish for that somewhere. There's <laughs> definitely rule three for that there somewhere. Uh, okay, pull out the Freddy vs. Jason movie. Okay, no, 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 put it back, put it back, put it back slowly. Okay, now um, let's see here. M move down the counter. Move down. Okay. You know who's uh, who plays the uh, the police chief in that movie? In which one? Is the voice of in uh, Freddy vs. Jason? Uh huh. It's the voice of Optimus Primal. Really? really? Yeah. Huh. And every time he talks, and you know, he, I know him from that. And he's like, don't worry, we're going to get this murderer. And it's like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so like the Cheetor and Rat Trap showing up to help you? Like, you can't dissociate it from when you're in your head. Oh my gosh, I, I got to pay more attention to that. I haven't seen that movie in a while. I, I got to say, it, as far as like versus movies goes, that one's actually pretty okay. No, I, that, I like that movie a lot. When it came out in theaters, I think we watched it a bunch of times and stuff. But People were like, oh, that movie's corny and dumb. Like, well, have you ever seen any Freddy Jason movie? They're <laughs> corny and dumb. Well, like, when I was a kid, too, it was like, that was like probably at the height of like watching horror movies. So it was like, oh my God, they're fucking Jason versus Freddy in one fucking movie? Like, yeah. it's out, it's gonna blow your mind, bro. It was actually pretty okay. Because, I mean, I can't imagine them have... I can't... Like, I wasn't watching it going, oh, that should have been like this and this should have been like that. Like, it was all right. No, it's a, it's a fun I, movie. But I could... It is. But there's other movies where you could do that. Like, uh, when I watched Alien vs. Predator, the first one in theaters, I was like, okay, that's dumb. This sucks. That's stupid. Oh, my God. Why am I here? Yeah. Yeah, Alien vs. I had no Predator. business being PG-13. Oh, God, no. No, I mean, like, come on. It's like... You, you could just have more violence and avoid, like, even, like, human casualties if you really want. But come on. Yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, Freddy vs. Jason, I've been wanting to watch that one again. But um, which ones were you saying you were going to – you said you went back and watched the old Nightmare? Oh, I, watched, I watched all of them. Every Freddy movie, every Jason movie. And then I, I'm like, oh, now I can have an opinion. Freddy movies are corny <laughs> but fun and don't take themselves seriously. Uh -huh. And Jason movies are really, like – dumb and low budget and almost never stay on track no that's kind of how they are but they're still fun in a magical way there's something oh, sure, special sure. about them but i mean like it's 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 just that they went so far off track like the first one it works as a slasher movie and it's and, and it's legitimately scary in that first one too yeah and then in the second one it's not even the same fucking series anymore no and it's then, like it's is that the one where he's got the bag over his head or is that the third one that's uh the third one and the second one it was going to be a different movie because it was going to be a series like halloween where it's different every year or uh -huh. different every mm -hmm. movie. And then the fourth <laughs> one, he comes back from the dead or fucking I don't and like you're like, whoa, well he wait, he's magical now? I thought he was just a murderer. Now he's like a zombie. Isn't and then a girl like with powers or something, a girl with psychic powers pushing. That's like away number or six or seven. Uh yeah, that was a later one. You know, he gets brought back to uh, to life by a lightning bolt. And then like he when Jason goes to New York, I thought it would be him <laughs> rampaging in New York. The first like hour of the movie, he's on a boat. And he gets to New York, he spends like two seconds walking around uh, Times Square. The rest of the time he's in like a warehouse. Like it is so not him in New York. 
No, yeah, for, for having that title, it is because it's kind of low budget. But actually, uh, number eight, that's my favorite one out of all of them. I just think that, like, it's balanced out kind of well because it starts off at Crystal Lake, and then it goes to him on the boat, and then they're in, like, New York, and even though they're in a warehouse or whatever, at least it's kind of, like, changing environments as that movie progresses. Yeah, I guess. Is that the one that I was just Cooper so disappointed. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes. Yeah, Man Behind the Mask. Hmm. Yeah, you and he's so out of control. Yeah, it's got the, he's in the music video and everything like that, too. It's been so long since I've seen that one. I've only seen, I've seen random ones, and I've seen, like, parts of that one. I've seen the first two, and then random parts of other ones. I don't even know what they are, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird. We, we Interesting talk, as that is. We talked about this, like, a couple weeks ago, but it's kind of like, when I was a kid, I was just obsessed with horror movies, but really, nowadays, I watch a horror movie, like, once in a blue moon, like, so rare. And I don't know why that, that is was, exactly. Uh, I don't know. Tastes. This. Just get older, you get kind of less that. scared. The weird thing is, when I sit down and watch one, though, I go, man, this is great. I don't know why I don't watch this anymore. And then it'll go another three months and I don't watch one again. Uh, right. Dave, you're saying you're saying when you were living with what? Oh, my roommate. When I lived with that roommate, uh, my like uh, my movie buff dude who was you know buying movies left, right, and center, I'd come home and, from work and like every day he was watching some new insanely – gory movie just like like i'd walk home go up the stairs all the lights are out tv's on so it's just like that that eerie tv light and uh (laughs) and he's staring at the tv and like a human centipede's on and he doesn't even look at me like he's still fixated on the screen he's like hey man like am i I gonna get stabbed tonight like after this i was gonna watch like uh you know uh tromeo and juliet like are you dude dude are you here He's are, you like, with, are you with us? He's like, I was thinking about watching some zombie movies, and I started to get hungry, so I got some pizza, and I just yeah, felt like, like, they're uh, eating, I gotta get something to eat too, you know? So look, man, I gotta go for a jog, and then I fucking move out. <laughs> I was a super cool dude, but it was just like, are you, like, with us in the real world right now? You... Yeah. <laughs> You're, you watch a lot of stabby things for me to feel comfortable. It's like it, it gives me life inside when I watch others suffer and die. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, are you, do you need to talk some feelings? <laughs> what are those? Do you need to bro out here? Let's bro out. Come on. Let's uh, let's have a, a good uh, ibro- ibromotional um, emotion bro. Fuck, help me out here, man. He's like, okay, okay. I, I got it. I got it. I'm bringing my machete. No, no. Leave the machete. Do not take the machete. We'll go to the park. We'll go to the We'll go to the park. Like, dude, we it's four o'clock in the morning. I know. He's like, okay, so park, and you don't want me to bring the machete and the hockey mask. I, I don't get it. What are we going out and doing now? Yeah, isn't that what we're doing? We're, we're living out the movie? Yeah, like, well, we're, if we're not going to go out and kill people, what is the point of leaving the apartment? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay, if you're listening, I love you, buddy. I'm kidding. <laughs> He's grabbing the machete okay. and the hockey mask right now as he hears that. He's just sharpening it. Well, yeah, he said his piece. Like, That's fine. This day was coming. I, he and I knew, both knew it. Once he gave out my secret, I had to go kill David. There, there could only be one. <laughs> uh, well, we should probably wrap this up. I think it's coming into almost the two and a half hour mark right here. Yeah, what I'm hours. thinking about doing is I'll probably end up just splitting the episode in half because it's so goddamn long. But splitting it in half like uh, the bodies that my roommate used to hide. Exactly. We'll just be like, we'll just split the dead center and be like, <laughs> <laughs> so, no. but no, Dave, thanks so much for coming on because you've been an awesome guest and we've been. Oh, you guys have been fantastic. So yeah, I know. That was, more, I was just like those ones where like, you know what? We should get some guests. I mean, we did this podcast for so long. We always had the fear for the longest time on Skype. They're like, it's just going to get all fucked up. It's already fucked up when we talk to each other on Skype. You add a third person in there. Next thing you know, everything's going to go haywire. And they're going to look at us like, hey, fucking idiots can't even get their fucking internet going. Fuck. So for a long time, we just like, we'll just talk to each other forever. So we, well, unless, just, unless people wish- are in person, we're like, we just never invited people on. They're like, you know what? We should just reach out to some people that we like their shit. Like, let's have them come on. It'd be fun to talk, break it up, and so on. What's what the, the worst that happens? Yeah, what's the worst that happens? Skype's just going to crash on us? We lose a recording? No. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I was. I, I'm a little disappointed I didn't get to be here to talk about the good, the bad, and the weird. Oh, oh yeah. You know what you would like, though? Because we're doing an alternative Westerns thing. So Cowboy Bebop's going to come up, and we're going to talk all Cowboy Bebop. If you want to be on I, that. I, I tried to get my girlfriend to watch uh, every episode, and uh, she fell asleep numerous times. And I'm like, you don't appreciate the art of Cowboy Bebop. It's, <laughs> what makes it magical is that it always ends mostly bittersweet, but that's just how life is. It is. 
Well, if you want to join us on that, we're going to do that like in two weeks or so. Uh, ooh, two weeks I move. Well, it might work around my moving schedule, actually. So, mm-hmm. yeah, because we're going to do... Since we're, we're, we're doing this kind of thing, we're leading up to the Magnificent Seven remake coming out. So we're yeah, like, that should be cool. We're like, let's do a bunch of alternative westerns that we always want to talk about anyway. So we did Good, Bad, and the Weird. We're going to do Faster coming up next. And then we were going to do Cowboy Bebop, the original Magnificent Seven, and so on. And that was about it. So well, we'll keep you updated when we kind of like think we're going to do that Cowboy Bebop one. And just kind of, if you happen to be there, then yeah, come on by and talk on it. That'd be I'm, sweet. I'd, I'd be down like a clown, Charlie. <laughs> Brown. <laughs> it's great you having you on man though you do uh we, like i said we kind of wanted to have you on since i first saw that episode with the uh, the creepy girl it's like i'm gonna latch on to him you know? oh man that i feel like is that real yes it was fucking real and i i wasn't like trying to make her seem eviler that is exactly exactly what happened and it was fucking creepy i know that girl <laughs> Well, not the real one, but the people out there in real life. Yeah, 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 I know. But like similar situation and similar just kind of like even look like I think I'm holy shit. Yeah, that might even be her. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, well, hey, hey you're racist, too, right? Uh, no, I'm not. Please <laughs> don't make me to, known to be your friend. We're not friends. Just because there's have to be all white people here and all of a sudden hey, Nazi you're white. talk I, happened. That doesn't mean that we are Nazis. We just happen to have we a know the War difference between laugh and believing in things we can joke <laughs> jesus christ people i just love that line too much culture i love that line <laughs> she really fucking said that and i was like oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no how am i gonna i need to teleport my way out of yeah, here how do i politely get away from this person because <laughs> i could do the movie thing and just run away just but then i gotta literally. see her the next day so yeah you're trapped in the endless vortex <laughs> But awesome. Well, Dave, is there any kind of shout outs you want to throw out there just to people listening if for some reason they didn't know where to check you out at by this point? Um, well, I can be found on YouTube. Uh, just look up Technical Dave or on Newgrounds by searching Technical Dave. I can be found on Twitter. My handle is at David Rossi. And I am found on other things with at David Rossi because my name is David Rossi. So yeah, it's pretty da, 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 easy to da, da. find it there. And I if for some reason the... that sounds like too much work, I'll try to put a link in the show notes just so it makes people's life even easier. Well, you guys have been absolute gentlemen and scholars and squires, and I'd kiss both of you right in your little noses if I were there. Yeah, Aww. too bad we're all like too much of a stone throw away from each other. Yeah. But yeah, make sure to check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, and more, and all that fun stuff. Till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And special oh, guest. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm Dave. Watch their shit or I'll fucking kill you. Exactly. Because we, we put a lot of time <laughs> and effort into that stuff, goddammit. <laughs> awesome. All right. Later, folks. See you some other time. Yeah. All right, dude. Thanks so much. That was actually a, that was a great episode. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Yeah. See, isn't podcasting great? That's the whole reason we kind of started up podcasting is we were listening to stuff like Kevin Smith and everything like that. And we we're like, man, this animation takes way too long to fucking come out. You don't even know when it's going to come out because you can't even plan it like you can video. It's yeah. just hopefully it will come out every three months, but that's not it. You know, you kind of wish it would come out every month at the very least. And then we're like, well, fuck it. Let's just do a podcast. We can do one of those every week. How hard is that going to be? Yeah. And then you know, just, it's a great way to like feel creative and express your opinions and not. Yeah. Just have it dragging like, well, it's being made. I swear, guys, it's being made. We're getting it done. Well, you know, what's the weird thing too about podcasts is. When, you, when you're done finished doing one, you're like, you sit back and you're like, oh, man, phew, man, I am so fucking worn out. Like, I did my creative thing for the day. <laughs> like, I, I don't got to do anything else. I don't know. It gives you that same feeling you get from, like, finishing up, like, 10 seconds of animation or finishing up, like, a video edit or anything like that, except for you really didn't do a whole lot except for talk. You get that high, man. You get that buzz. You just keep coasting. It's like, yeah. you know, you could go to all the trouble of getting the really good drugs or you could just snort some coke. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just just go just go the distance. But I don't know what it is podcasting. I really will say if like you could choose one form of art that people would just pay you for the rest of life and you could do it all day long, it's like dude, podcasting would be the way to go. Why would I want to do anything else? <laughs> this even even the editing part, that's part of the thing. It does take longer than like people would think, but other than that though, it's just like you sit back, you get buddies together and you just talk about whatever. And you know, people listen in, everybody's having laughs and good time and we're learning things along the way like 
dude, it's the greatest thing you could possibly imagine. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just like hanging out in person, except you can't uh, be in person. No, well, yeah, but like, well, yeah. you know, even even in person though, that's podcasts get almost even better when you're in person. I don't know because you get a little more animated and everything like that. Oh yeah, did you ever listen to Sleepy Cast? Oh, I, I listen to those guys all the time. Yeah. Yeah, there's some uh, rowdy motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing too. Is like there's there's guys. It's like, it depends. It's like there's different ways people podcast. Some people smoke pot and podcast. Some people mm-hmm. drink a bunch of beers and podcast. And when the people that drink a bunch of beers, you can watch it as long as the episode goes oh. on. <laughs> Shit yeah. starts to go in different places because of that. Yeah. There yeah, are they there's a... very disoriented and they get like less coherent in their thoughts. <laughs> and then there's people like us who don't do any of that and just podcast and. Well, Speak for yourself. I, I do a little bit of that. I don't do it so much. I do drink more than you, but I, I don't like always. I usually don't drink when we do a podcast. Once in a while, I will. I remember the when we were doing, God, this is going to put a real date on it. Um, The day the new RoboCop came out, <laughs> for whatever reason we were recording, I was pretty hammered on that episode. Was it that? Oh, I, I guess that might have been it. But yeah, well, I mean, like for the yeah. most part, like when podcasting, I don't know. I don't know what yeah, it is. I personally time, don't think yeah. beer and podcasting mix. Because if I have a beer, I'll just like, I'll just be like, oh man, I feel, oh. Feel kind of tired and yeah, I get sleepy. Yeah, I, I don't like that though. That takes me away from podcasting. I like, like I won't have like I won't get hammered usually. That was like the one time I was kind of like uh, the, the Sonic Boom game. I don't know about it. <laughs> but but I mean beyond that though, I remember like I might have a beer, but nothing too bad. It depends on like my mood and what the podcast is about. Actually, it's kind of weird. The, like this seems like a beer topic. Oh, this seems like a monster topic. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah. This one seems like green tea with a little bit of lemon and honey. <laughs> a, little, a little calm down. <laughs> calm down. You're getting too hopped up off that green tea there. Some ginger snaps and kick back and just discuss a little this and that. Yeah. But no, that's what you, yeah, you got to come back on again. I'll, I'll let you know when that Cowboy Beep Up one comes up because I know that's, I, I'm going to say like in two weeks or so, give or take, but. Sure. And then we could switch that around even with our Magnificent Seven one if for some reason you could do it like the week after and just pre-plan it like that and go from there because yeah i gotta talk about like the best anime of all time just about uh yeah (laughs) i'm not gonna even pretend to disagree with that for comedic purposes no it really is it's one of those ones i i I have looked but i don't think there is such thing as a better anime than cowboy bebop i was having an argument about that with a friend of mine once what was their, their favorite anime uh he said that um oh shit same director um space Dandy. samurai shampoo oh Sam- Sam- oh space Sam- dance that one is really good but not even close to being uh <clears throat> being i know i was good. trying to to yeah i'm just like okay i I, pre- I respect your opinion but you're wrong <laughs> yeah exactly it's like uh i don't know like I, I, I'm, I'm just i'd like to find an anime that doesn't involve like fucking high school kids fighting demons or yeah. like a socially awkward guy comes across a girl like you're the chosen one. Oh, I am. Like, I know there's shit. way too much. Like, as much as uh, that's another one of those problems, right? Like Western animation will have its problems uh, with like recurring stories and like Japanese anime has that. Or, like it's always the high school kids in like a regular ass high school. And then there's like demons or magical girls or like or this zombies kind of shit. Or Can something. you give me like a different fucking setting, please? And then he just like, you know, they have the thing where he says, I want to train you how to fight. Well, I don't know if I can do that. He sh- stumbles, falls Ooh, on her hand, yeah. hand lands on her tit, like, <laughs> slap. Like, uh, some of us know how to talk drop. to the opposite sex, okay. <laughs> a sweet droop. Well, and I think that's the thing, too, is like, they still, they don't always release, like, uh, it sounds weird when you say, like, adult animes, but I mean, like, adult-oriented ones. Sure. You know, it's like like Cowboy Bebop. That's what I like about that show is, you know, you can pretty much take any show and by whatever the age the main characters are in the show, that kind of tells you who your target audience is. Of course. And if you kind of break that down to most shows, you go, okay, well, in Full Metal Alchemist, there are a bunch of 13-year-olds. Well, technically, this show is made for teenagers, you know. And Cowboy Bebop, though, you're like, okay, the guys are like 20 to 40. Well, there you go. That's that's your audience is almost in the age range of 30. Oh, God. I'm, I'm almost as old as... Uh... Jet? as jet at this point i felt really odd when i'm like you know what i'm like older than spike now and i don't I'm, i don't have a bounty hunting business i'm not in <laughs> space i gotta get my shit together yeah there, there is that thing when, i think when you start surpassing characters ages you know that they're fictional characters and they can be written cool and have a big long story but then you kind of start putting together like well man my life was not nearly as like as engaging as that guy on screen <laughs> who's yeah, animated I, I and not real <laughs> who's animated, but you know, that still. guy on screen, who didn't have to put up with like student dead and stuff like that. And that fucking <laughs> bitch Susan who broke up with me. And 
<laughs> Why is his life so perfect? I mean, okay, like, yeah, so there is some bad things, and I mean, like, he's getting guess, shot at. I kind but... of, and then he dies, but whatever. But whatever, like, <laughs> it's better than my life. Oh, I just realized, I'm not sure if this is intentional, I just realized this. Spike dies at 27. Just like oh, Kurt Cobain, shit, you're right. just like Jimi Hendrix. I can't believe you're I just right. like Janis Joplin. Just yeah, like... the, the magical number 27. My buddy, the one who had all the uh, Dragon Ball Z teps, he, he died at 27. He was like this big metalhead. We all thought oh. that was like, that's sad that he, he died, but it was super fitting he died at 27. Now, this sounds weird, but like, I always had this fear because I own so many videos and it sounds like this guy has so many videos that one day my video stack would collapse on me and that would be it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that's not what he had because that puts fear into me if that is no, the case. He, he was like I will start rearranging months. my DVD collection and put it all on the ground from this point on then. He was morbidly <laughs> obese. He died of a heart attack. And that's where we're going to leave off at the show. Let's just cut out at the darkest point you can imagine of death. Yeah, well, you know, actually, we just had a bunch of Skype bears afterwards from that point on. So we said, hey, okay, it's gone on long enough. Let's call it a day right here. What do you think? So we put it into it there. So, once again, thanks very much to Tactical Dave for being on the show. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and co-host as always, Ryan Dunnigan. We will see you some other time. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. And if you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. Won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks for listening, and tune in next week to Old Man Orange.